Emily Schnall with Dinosaur Channel. Today we're here at Temple University with Associate Instructional Professor of Geology, Allison Duratsian. We're going to learn how she became a paleontologist. I started thinking what kinds of courses I would need to get a background for studying dinosaurs and I realized, okay, I need the biology to understand the animals but I also need the geology to understand the environments in which the animals are living. And so I started my undergraduate degree as a declared geology major, having never taken a geology course in my entire life. Just a lot of people that I know who have gone into paleontology have done double majors in geology and biology, but basically what I did was a geology major and a biology minor. Um, I went through all female education probably from about the third grade up through high school so all of my classmates were girls and all of the students in my science classes were girls so and actually most of my teachers I think maybe all of my science teachers were women um, so the idea of, of girls and women pursuing the sciences never seemed strange to me at all um, in college, the geology classes was pretty much about 50-50, and actually in the bio classes, it was more women than men. There are, um, and I've seen even within the last um, 15 years, the, the number of women in paleontology, particularly young women in paleontology, has just skyrocketed, which is, which is a gr wonderful, wonderful thing for, for the profession, and I'm really glad to see it. One of the important things if you're trying to understand the biology of extinct animals is to have a good understanding of the anatomy and biology of modern animals because as much as we want to, we can't go back in time and watch the extinct animals interacting with each other and with their environment, but we can look at this and look at the anatomy of animals in the modern world. So one of the things that I, uh, that I do when I teach is I talk with my students about, well, oh, how do we know that you know, certain types of dinosaurs were meat eaters and certain types of dinosaurs were plant eaters? How, how are the ways that we can tell? And one of the things that is a really great way to tell whether an animal, whether it's extinct or whether it's alive today, is a carnivore or an herbivore, is to look at the type of teeth that they have. And the teeth of meat eating animals is different than the teeth of plant-eating animals because you need different kinds of teeth to pierce and slice through meat than to grind up plant material. So if we sort of start with the dinosaurs and work then into some of the modern animals, but if we look at a meat-eating dinosaur like Ceratosaurus, or if we want one that's a lot more familiar like T-Rex, what you see is a lot of very long, pointy, sharp teeth, and some meat-eating dinosaurs actually have little serrations like steak knives on the sides of those teeth to help them slice through um, the meat when they're eating it. And if we look at dinosaurs that eat plants, things like this duck-billed dinosaur, Parasaurolophus, and I wish I could open the mouth here, but I can't, but what you can see just by looking on the edge of these teeth is that the surface is a lot flatter. These aren't little steak knife blades. Okay, these are surfaces that are designed to be for grinding up plant material. Okay, now how do we know that flatter teeth are used for crushing and grinding things and pointy teeth are used for eating meat? Well, we know that because if we look at modern animals where we can look at the teeth and look at what the animals are eating, we can actually compare certain tooth shape with diet. So, let's look at some modern critters and this is this is an American alligator and if we look at the alligator from the side we see something that's broadly similar to what we saw in the meat-eating dinosaur we've got a lot of pointy teeth and alligators are the mostly mostly fish but again this is something that this is not a vegetarian animal this is something that's going to be eating a lot of of animal protein. It's, it's a meat eater to a, a large extent. And we've got nice little pointy teeth that goes along with being a carnivore. Oh well. <laughs> and if we look at something that might even be a little bit more familiar, because let's face it, most of us in our day-to-day -day lives are not going out and staring at alligators' mouths, but I like to talk about house pets. So let's talk about dogs and cats, because 
most of us are probably going to be familiar with dogs and cats. This is not a domestic dog, this is a coyote, but the teeth are pretty similar. If we look at dogs, they have very large pointy canine teeth in front that's used for stabbing through meat. And if we look on the inside, I'm going to actually open up the jaws here. Let's see if I can do this without dropping it. There are several teeth that are basically shearing teeth that when the jaw closes, these things act like the blades on scissors. And they shear past each other and that allows for slicing through meat. Now dogs and cats both have teeth like that, but dogs also, in the back of their mouths, have big flat molars, kind of like the ones in our mouths, okay, which are used for crushing things. Okay, so flat surfaces we know are used for crushing things. And when dogs chew on bones, okay, those are the teeth that they're using, these big flat, crushy surfaces. Now if we look at the cat, And again, this is not a domestic cat, this is a bobcat, so it's a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to see things. But again, we've got the big canine teeth in the front for stabbing. We've got the shearing teeth that act like scissors for slicing. But the kitty doesn't have the big flat crushing molars in the back. And cats are what we refer to as hyper carnivores. They pretty much stab and slice meat and that's it. They don't crunch bones but they don't have the large crushing teeth in the back. Modern cats have lost the, the crushing molars that we see in dogs and, and other types of carnivores because they, they don't use their teeth in that way. They're basically just built for stabbing and slicing and that's about it.